Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the curves y is equal to sine x, y is equal to cosine x, x is equal to pi by 6 and x is equal to pi by 4, about y is equal to negative 1. Give your answer to two decimal places. We're given that the functions y is equal to sine x and y is equal to cosine x form the boundaries of a region. And where the region is also bounded by the lines x is equal to pi by 6 and x is equal to pi divided by 4. And we're asked to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the bounded region about the line y is equal to negative 1. It can be helpful if we first try and sketch our solid. In fact, the solid is a ring where the cross sections of the band are wedge-shaped. Now to find the volume of this solid, we sum using integration the areas of all its vertical cross sections. The cross sections are actually circular washers. That's where the outer edge is bounded by the cosine of x and the inner edge by sine x. And to find the area of these cross sections, since the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared, letting r sub o, that's r outer, be the radius of the outer circle, and r sub i, that's r inner, be the radius of the inner circle, then the area of a cross sectional disk, a subscript d, is equal to pi times r outer squared minus pi times r inner squared. And, of course, we can take the common factor of pi outside some parentheses. Now, recalling that the centre of our rotation is at y is equal to negative 1, then the outer radius, r subscript o, is the distance from the centre of rotation to the line y is equal to 0, that's the x-axis, which is equal to 1, plus the cosine of x for the given value of x. And so the outer radius is 1 plus the cosine of x. And similarly, the inner radius, r i, is the distance from the centre of rotation to the line y is equal to 0, so that's 1, plus the sine of x. And this means that the inner radius, ri, is 1 plus sine x. And so the area of a cross-sectional disk is given by pi multiplied by 1 plus the cosine of x squared minus 1 plus the sine of x squared. Expanding the inner parentheses, we see that the 1s disappear, and we have pi multiplied by cos squared x minus sine squared x plus 2 cos x minus 2 sine x. And recalling from our trigonometric identities that the cosine squared of x minus the sine squared of x is equal to the cosine of 2x, we have the area of a cross-sectional disk is then pi multiplied by the cosine of 2x plus 2 cos x minus 2 sine x. Now making some room, and now to find the volume of our solid, we integrate the area of these disks with respect to x between our boundaries for x. That's where the lower bound is pi by 6 and the upper bound is pi by 4. So we're effectively taking the sum of the areas of infinitely many cross-sectional disks bounded by the two functions, cos x and sin x, and between pi by 6 and pi by 4. By the additive property of integrals, we can split our integral into 3, and we can take the constant factors of pi and 2 pi out front. And we have three definite integrals that we know how to evaluate. In our first integral, we'll use the fact that if u is equal to ax, then the integral of the function f of u with respect to x is given by 1 over a times the integral of f of u with respect to u. In our case, f of u is equal to the cosine of 2x, where a is equal to 2. For our first term, then, we have pi multiplied by 1 over 2 times the sine of 2x evaluated between pi by 4 and pi over 6. We use the fact that the definite integral of the cosine of x between a and b with respect to x is the sine of x evaluated between a and b. Our second integral is then 2 pi multiplied by the sine of x, evaluated between pi over 4 and pi over 6. And finally, for our third term, we use the fact that the integral of the sine of x is the negative cosine of x. And so our third integral is negative 2 pi multiplied by the negative cosine of x, evaluated between pi over 4 and pi over 6. Now, since the limits of integration were the same for each term, we can collect everything together and take a factor of pi by 2 outside some parentheses, so that we have the volume is pi by 2 multiplied by the sine of 2x plus 4 times the sine of x plus 4 times the cosine of x, all evaluated between pi by 4 and pi by 6. And now making some space and rewriting, we can substitute in our limits and make some simplifications, so that the first term in the first set of parentheses is the sine of pi over 2, and the first term in the second set of parentheses is sine of pi over 3. And now evaluating our sines and cosines, the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, the sine of pi by 4 is equal to root 2 over 2, as is cosine of pi over 4, the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, 
and the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, and the cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So now we see that some of our 2's cancel, and we have pi over 2 multiplied by 1 plus 4 times the square root of 2 minus 5 root 3 over 2 plus 2. And once again making some space, we have that the volume is pi over 2 multiplied by negative 1 plus 4 times the square root of 2 minus 5 times root 3 over 2. Evaluating inside our parentheses to five decimal places, we have pi over 2 multiplied by 0 0.32673. This evaluates to 0 0.51 to two decimal places, and so we find that the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the curves y is equal to the sine of x, y is the cosine of x, x is pi over 6 and x is pi over 4, about the line y is negative 1, is 0 0.51 units cubed to two decimal places.